it's Laura with Following the Paper Trail, and it's What's Up Wednesday for April 20th, um, 8th. Oh, I pulled that one out of the air. It's the last Wednesday in April, and I have finally got the tags to show you that go inside the vellum envelopes that I did a tutorial for a couple of Wednesdays ago. I also did a tutorial for doing the cover with the fun foam, with this rubber stamping on the fun foam. Then I did the embossing on the vellum envelopes, then using um, Tattered Angel's Glimmer Mist as watercolor. The embossing acts as a resist. I also showed you this nifty um, way of hooking your, of binding your mini album together using the little S swirly paper clips. Um, anyway, I do want to show you the tags. These are fun tags that I came up with. They are a gatefold tag that fits inside. I'm into gatefolds right now. I have a gatefold coming up on uh, Ustream this Friday and Saturday with a, a new gatefold. Um, one. You have to come and see it, and I'll, I'll talk more about that later. Anyway, gatefold tag. I digress all the time, don't I? Pops out from open underneath. Really pretty Prima flower there. Those are those ones with the pretty glitter on them. They are so pretty. Um, but it opens up. You can have journaling on each side. Photo mat in the center. You can have photos or journaling on the outside here. And another photo mat in the back. Then it closes up. Pops right underneath that flower. And there you've got a tag. This could work. You just modify the dimensions to fit into any envelope. But this is using um, these five inch envelope, vellum envelopes. Um, you can see there's another one of the tags. This one's got some punch dragonflies on it. Pops open. And then on the back, I'll show you the next one. I did them all with these really pretty primas. And then it's, this one's got birds on it. Pops open. It's got some bird stamps on the inside. So let me show you. And then here's the last page that I'm going to work on the, that one for today. I will have the finish, a slideshow of the finished album on my blog um, later this evening. I'm running a bit late. I had a bunch of stuff for school stuff to do today for the kids. Anyway, so what you're going to start out with is you're going to start out with a four and seven eighths by ten and a half inch piece of cardstock. You're going to score it from each end, score it in two and five eighths inch in from each end and then you're going to fold it up in order to get this little notch out what i do is i just hold these two pieces together and this i'm actually using a one and three eighths inch round punch to slip that in line up the little knobbies on there and punch your circle and that's going to give your your little notch there your finger that goes around the flower now with mine what i do is what i call my double distressing technique then i like to use two colors of distress ink this is my kind of yellow combination the scattered straw with tea dye i also like um let me grab those real quick and show you i like the new rusty hinge along with vintage photo those work really good in tandem um I, my other favorite is using um i like old paper with frayed burlap they have a greenish cast to them um, but I just like using a lighter and a darker. So the first, the first go round, I just distressed it, um, with this lighter color. In this case, it was scattered straw and I distress it in. I always use daubers to distress. So I just, you know, kind of have it fade in. But if you notice on actual real, di real distressing on something that was really old, it's not a single color when you distress it. It's a, it's, it starts darker on the edges and gets lighter as it goes in because for instance, on a book. The page is distressed because this is catching air. The center part is not getting the air and light as much. So then I take my second color, in this case it's tea dye, and I just run my dauber right on, just kind of on the edge, and that gives it that darker edge. And then I go at the corners especially and just bring a little extra color in. And I just really like the, the what I call double distressing. The effect of that, I think it just looks much more real and natural um, when you do it that way. So play with your color combinations with all the new colors that Tim Holtz came out with. There's a lot of combinations you can use his. You can also use, obviously, you can use other kinds of of. Uh, ink this you know tim holtz just happens to be my faves so anyway okay let me just get that done real quick and you're going to want to do that on both sides and i'll do the other side um a little bit later okay then 
to, to cover the pages. Um, on the outside, I've cut two pieces that are two and a quarter by four and a half. They're going to get attached and you center them in. I like to have that edge showing. So I'm going to center that in and then I will go back with my hole punch again and just fix that. You could probably attach these first, but I like to do the distressing and that's why I attach these afterwards. Then for both the center and the back, you're going to cut a piece that's four and a half by five. And you can attach. You can also attach pattern paper on these leaves on the inside. I just decided because I was using this kind of applesauce colored cardstock that um, I would these would make great journaling spots. So I just drew lines on there and did some stamping on it. Then on the back, again, I'll do attach the photo mat. Um, after I have um, those attached, what I've taken is this is a, a cool punch. I don't remember whose punch this is. This is a McGill punch. <laughs> Don't know who they are. That's this is this punch, um, and then what I like to do is I just score it with my piercing tool real lightly down the center of these kind of heart shape petals, and that allows me to more easily fold them. And I'm folding them down, and this just makes a nice kind of little backing behind. The Prima flower, the Prima rose. You could also, I guess, make your own rose if you wanted to. So, um, and then I attach this with some glue dots to that. See, that just makes a nice base for it. And then I go ahead and close this and I attach the Prima flower again with a glue dot or something that's going to really affix to it because it's going to be taking a little bit of a beating with these flaps going in and out from underneath it. So, just affix that down. Once the papers are all in, you slip it in the sleeve, it's ready to go. But um, anyway, I'll have a video of the whole album. I just used some ribbon to hook the paper clips all together. It just makes a really cute little album. Um, so I will go ahead and have a slideshow of that up on my blog. I'll also be showing you how to make these gate folded tags to go inside. So anyway, thanks for stopping by with What's Up Wednesday. Um, don't forget this Friday and Saturday, Friday night and Saturday, late afternoon, Pacific time. You can get the specific times on my blog at followingthepapertrail.blogspot.com. Um, I will be doing a Ustream class on my Gatefold Mini. All of the kits that, that everybody bought went out on Monday, so hopefully they will be starting to arrive. Um, but I will be showing you this binding technique that I developed. Um, and I came up with this, so if you see a copy of this on Ustream, I'm the one who came up with it. But anyway, that's that's a whole other story. Um, and I will be showing you how you can use the bind it all rings without necessarily having a bind it all. So you don't have to have a bind it all to do this. And this is the rock star one. I'm gonna try to have this one done for the class. I will be working on the vintage one. There's also the one, the garden one. Um, with the gate. I won't have this one done. Um, but check on my blog. It will also give you a supply list for those of you who don't have the kit. It will also give you supplies you need um, other than the kit, the, you know, consumables like adhesives, what kind of cutters, that kind of thing that you will need. And I will post that on my blog um, tomorrow sometime. The class starts at 7 o'clock on Friday Pacific time. Remember, if you're on the East Coast, you're three hours different in terms of time. Um, you can also just Google or Bing or whatever search engine you like to use a time conversion and it will convert the time for you wherever you are in the world and tell you what time the show is on. I always also record my use streams so you can always go back and watch the use streams at any time. I'm not deleting anything. You can go check them out. So anyway, hopefully see you all on Friday. Real easy. I also have a link to get to my Ustream channel. You don't have to sign up to watch. You can just watch as a guest if you want. If you want to participate in the chat, you do have to go ahead and sign up. It is totally free, but that way you can participate in the chat. So anyway, check on my blog to find out more information about that class um, and also to find out how to make these gatefold tags. So we'll talk to you later. Thanks a bunch.